Today, we are talking about taking a break from grains. But first, just in case there's anybody here new, my name is Lita and as usual, I am not a doctor. But I'm just super passionate about keto and talking about natural ways that we can improve our lives, whether that's physically, mentally, emotionally, we talk about everything in here. It usually lo loops back to weight loss somehow. That always get, goes back into there. That's one of our most popular topics. But we talk about all kinds of stuff. But just please keep in mind that anything I talk about is just my opinion. Okay, so let's, let's get into it. First of all, to start off with, let's talk about what is a grain. Now, you can Google this and you can find all kinds of like little things that can be hidden and stuff, but I'm going to talk about the main ones. Obviously, wheat, corn, rice, oats, barley, bran. One that's a little bit kind of on the fence is quinoa. They consider that a pseudo grain, so it really depends on how sensitive a person could be. But let's just put it in here in the keto perspective. It's ridiculously high in carbs like ridiculous. So unless you were going to have a one and done, or you're going to decide to go off on purpose, quinoa should not be like, honestly, I, it's super high in carbs. It's crazy how high it is. Okay. If you're into putting a label on things, having grains in your diet is considered dirty keto. Being grain free is considered clean keto, along with not having any other bad ingredients. I Okay, I'll say bad. Any other ingredients that kind of go against the keto philosophy. Um, honestly, I don't care label wise if you're clean, if you're dirty, whatever. There is, <laughs> there's no judgment and it's okay to be a little dirty. Um, not a problem with that. What I care about is that you feel good and that you have the best shot at improving your health and to lose weight. That is the most important thing. The label, that's, it's just a label, right? So what's best for you is what makes you feel the best. Bottom line, doesn't matter. Okay, so when I say the words grain-free, tell me, do you guys cringe? Uh, I know Janet is grain-free, so that's awesome. Um, but for those of you who are not, say, 80% at least grain-free, when I say this, does it make you nervous? Does it make you think, okay, am I never allowed to have a grain again? Is that is that what you're thinking? Just gonna look and see if anyone says, saying anything. Okay, no one's telling me. Okay, because a lot of times when I'm talking to people just randomly and I talk about being grain free, they're like, oh, I really don't think I can do it. I, I, I really don't think so. It's just been ingrained in us ever since we were born that grains are healthy and grains should be part of our lives and blah, blah, blah. And let me tell you, first of all, don't panic. Don't panic. If you're someone like Janet or someone like me who is who knows without a doubt that having grains in our diet really, really affect us, then going grain-free is not a big whoop because we know we feel so much better. Like, why would you want to feel like crap and you can feel super good, right? But for the rest of the people who are like, I'm not really sure, and, and I, I know it's better, but I don't really know if I can go off it or whatever, don't worry about it. Don't look at it like, like this is a forever thing. Think of it like keto is not a religion, it's our lifestyle. We say that all the time. We're very open in the group for the fact that we go off. Sometimes we, we, we go off for a short time, for a long time, for a weekend, for a one and done. There's lots of reasons to go off and there's no judgment at all, right? The reason why we would consider going off grains would be for, to improve our health, to lose more weight, to feel amazing. So I want to go over kind of like the most uh talked about areas of the reasons why you should go off grains and what the experts are saying i'm just gonna see if anyone says here sean hi lita going back 100 percent in january and bringing a few new friends to the group awesome my biggest 
grains were always low carb tortillas. Grains kick my butt. Yes. And Sean, I'm going to be addressing uh, your particular issue, which was also my particular issue coming up. Um, it is so important. Uh, Lori says it does make me feel a little bit ug because I think of all the things I love that I will miss out. Well, and, and here's, and that's the thing, you know what, it doesn't have to be 100% for, for the purpose of this, um, challenge that we're doing this week. I really do encourage people to be hundred percent grain free for seven days, just for seven days, because I want you guys to feel the difference, not having it in your body. But if you are not bothered by it, and we'll go over some of the things that you might notice. Um, if you're not bothered by it, then there's nothing wrong with having it in your diet a little bit here and there, wherever it works for you. Maybe just consider not having it every day. Oh, I didn't show you my mug today. I got a new one. Look at that, isn't it cute? Not before my coffee. For you Canadians out there, I just got this at Walmart like about four days ago. So if you're interested, it's heavy duty too really heavy duty and it's got these neat little specks on it and a nice little base. I really like it. Super um, good in the dishwasher and washes up really good. And it's got, I like the big bottom on it because it sits nice and flat and I tend to be a little bit handsy. So I kind of knock things over. I don't know if they would have this in the Walmart in the States, but here in Canada. Mm -mm. Okay. So I want to talk first about health, how health can improve by going off grains. So I am going to show you, I've talked about this many, many times, my absolute holy grail, Dr. Perlmutter, my biggest keto crush. If I ever have a chance to meet Dr. Perlmutter, I will be red in the face and I will be flabbergasted because I won't even know what to say because he has literally changed my life. This book is so amazing. Again, even if you're not willing to go 100%, it's still worth reading. It's so informative. But anyways, I am going to read the section here. Okay, so these are just some. He says these are just some. There's so much more. I've, I've heard of so much more, but these are just some of the health conditions that can be improved by going grain free. Okay. So I'm just going to read here. ADHD, allergies and food sensitivities, anxiety and chronic stress. I can tell you 100% my anxiety goes through the roof when I'm eating grains, like when I'm on vacation and I'm kind of letting it go or whatever. And it's just like, here I am on this amazing vacation. I should be so happy. And I'm getting the most amazing anxiety. And it took me a lot of years to actually get the connection between that. Um, autoimmunity issues, chronic constipation, diarrhea, chronic fatigue, chronic headaches and migraines, depression, diabetes, epilepsy, focus and concentration problems. I'll add to that like brain fog, frequent colds or infections, high blood pressure, uh, inflammatory conditions and diseases, including arthritis. So that's what Janet and I were talking about. Insomnia, intestinal problems, including celiac disease, gluten sensitivity, irritable bowel syndrome, colitis, and Crohn's disease. Memory problems and mild cognitive impairment, frequently a precursor for Alzheimer's. So I just want to segue to say that Dr. Perlmutter is a neurologist, specializes in Alzheimer's. Okay, so that is his big thing. Yes, he talks about diet and weight loss and all these other things, but his big push is dementia and Alzheimer prevention. Okay, so that's why it's so, he talks about it so much about being grain free. Um, overweight and obesity, having trouble losing weight, mood disorder, Tourette syndrome, and much, much more. Um, even if you even if you don't suffer from any of the above conditions, eliminating grains improves physical and mental health in everyone, even if you don't notice an actual sensitivity, like say diarrhea or constipation, like something, you know, obvious. So that's really interesting. Um, he doesn't, okay, he doesn't talk, he didn't say specifically thyroid in that one section that I just read, but it, he definitely has it in a different part of the book. I'm not sure why I didn't mention it there, but that's kind of what Sean and I were just kind of chatting about. Who here has a thyroid issue? Who here has Hashimoto's, hypothyroid, uh, 
thyroiditis, it, grains cause the immune system to basically attack the thyroid. <laughs> it's really like the worst thing for the thyroid. Um, and you know, it's such an easy, it's such an easy fix. Like when I turned my hypothyroidism around, it was after really embracing this, really embracing the grain free. I had tried all the other stuff. I never went on medication, but I tried all the other things that I needed to do for my thyroid. And if you want to read about that, um, where do I have this in probably success stories. I would say it's probably in guide number 10. I have my hypothyroid um, success story in there and it's my whole story about that. Um, but it was really when I embraced going grain free that I noticed this huge change with my thyroid. Um, if the thyroid is sluggish or impaired, weight loss comes to a screeching halt. I, I can't emphasize that enough. It really, really does for people that have thyroid issues. So that's a huge one. Um, a lot of women don't even know that they have a thyroid issue. That's another That's an, another segue there. But um, if you struggle with losing weight and you've never had your thyroid checked, that that's something that you might want to consider too. And you know what, Debbie Brown and I have had lots of talks on this. If you look back in um, guide number seven or eight, because I have them in both, our past talks, and there's one specifically in there about the thyroid, so you can go in there and watch that if you want to. Um, but it is so amazing how grains and thyroid is just crazy. Um, Sean, it's gr crazy how good you feel going totally grain free, but it's really hard to get there and do that regularly. Even cutting it mostly works miracles. My anxiety gets nuts, headaches, gas. Exactly. Exactly. I got up for a bit and my thyroid that has been great is out of range big time now. I know. And it's just like, the crazy thing about this is that it seems too simple to actually be real. Like you're telling me that just by omitting a food group, that my thyroid is going to be so much better. And unless you do kind of like uh, the experiment, we'll say Sean, Sean and I are lifetime experimenters on, off, on, off grains, but we know for fact the difference. Um, Sean, you said before that you're on medication and you had to have your, uh, uh, either you had to have it adjusted or your doctor said that it went way up or something like that. That's lab proof right there. You know, that's the proof right there that it makes such a difference for your thyroid. Uh, Kim, uh, I suspect hypo, but tag within range. So although I have so many symptoms, they won't test in BC, pay out of pocket only, but might be next. You know what? That is uh, the really unfortunate truth. Even my regular uh, GP, he would only test THS or THS, TSH. Yes, yeah, sorry. And he would only test that. And it came back within range which is what usually happens. That's why Debbie and I had that talk about that because there are so many other things that need to be tested. Um, and unfortunately, a regular GP is probably not gonna do it. So I ended up going to my naturopathic doctor and he ordered the test for me. And you're right, Kim, it was out of my pocket. That was the only way that I could do it. Um, you don't necessarily have to be tested. If you're suspecting it, do your own experiment. Go 100% grain free and see how you feel. Because that right there, I mean, you don't necessarily have to have lab work to tell you unless you're, I mean, if you're feeling completely, you know, so, so horrible that you feel like possibly medication or whatever. But I'm saying if you're suspecting it, there is nothing wrong with just trying it. Just give it a try and see the difference that you feel. Okay. Related to weight loss. Okay. I have a section here specifically related to weight loss because that's everybody's favorite topic. So grains and how it affects weight loss it raises insulin. You know that little thing I post in the group often where there's like a piece of whole wheat bread and then there's a Snickers bar and the piece of whole wheat bread will raise your insulin and keep it higher longer than the Snickers bar? It's true. It, grains raise it. Wheat is particularly bad, but they're all, they're all like that. They raise your insulin huge. Um, they increase inflammation, which makes it really hard to lose weight. It damages the gut lining, which makes digestion inefficient. It 
can make us retain water, puffy, bloated, all of that kind of stuff. And here's the, here's the one that I always like to say, what are we not eating when we're eating those grains? So let's say that we're actually tracking our macros because hopefully that's what we're doing. If you're actually tracking your macros and you put in the macro counts for something with grains, that's huge. Like, I don't know about you guys, but like, I have tried tracking like, okay, I'm going to have some rice or, you know, I'm going to have whatever. And it's like, <laughs> that's, that's like more than my whole day. So truthfully, the only way you could really sneak in grains, unless you're doing what Sean said and had her low carb tortilla would be probably one of the only things that you could kind of sneak in there and be within your macro count. You're going way off. I mean, there's just, there's no way you could stick to your macro count of your low carbs if you are putting grains in there. So that's a whole other issue, right? If we're trying to be keto or we're trying to be really low carb, we're not gonna get there by having grains. So from the weight loss perspective, it's definitely not a good food group for us. Um, okay, so eliminating grains 100%. Okay, when I talk about eliminating grains 100%, you really truly will not know if having them in or having them out makes a difference unless you go 100%. So if you're kind of like one day a little bit and one day not and one day a little bit, you, you don't know. You can't, your body will not tell you. Ideally, it would be three weeks. Ideally, it would be at least three weeks to give it a really good solid go. But truthfully, even after a week, I mean, you definitely feel after a week, which is why I wanted to add this into this challenge so that people could feel seven days of no grains just to see like, oh, I'm starting to feel like more energetic or less brain fog and my joints don't hurt so much or whatever, losing more weight, all that kind of stuff. I wanted people to be able to feel it, hoping that maybe you'll continue on with it, but at least note how you feel. No matter what, all things being equal, and when I say all things being equal, I mean you're tracking your macros, you're eating your keto food, da 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 not having grains out of your diet, you are going to lose more weight. I mean, there's just, there is no way around, you are going to lose more weight. But what typically happens with pe when people eat grains is they kind of do it when they're not really fully on or they're way off. That's me. If, I, if I'm kind of doing it, I'll still stay off the grains. But if I'm like off, off, like if I'm, you know, fall off the wagon, throw the gas on, light the match, you know, that whole thing, like vacation or whatever, um, I will end up, I have many times gone for grains and I will tell you, true story, this last time that I went away, I decided, I don't know, you have amnesia, you have amnesia when it comes to this stuff. I don't know if you guys have had this, but I have amnesia and I say, oh, it's okay. Like I'm going to be on vacation and I, it's oh, just two weeks or whatever. <sighs> By the second week my knees hurt so badly I could barely move them. I'm not embarrassed to tell you that I had a hard time getting on and off the toilet. Like, I'm not kidding you. I'm 54 years old and I was like, holy crap. If there was like a, a rail on the side that I could have grabbed, I would have gone for it. Like, that's how bad my knees felt. I felt so achy and tired all over. I just obviously gained weight, you know, and everything. And I vowed, I said, that's it. That is it, I don't, I, I, I will never have this amnesia again. I will never forget this again. I'm not saying I would never have a one and done, but it is literally going to be a one done. It's not going to be a one and a go, 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 go. Never. A once done, that's it. That is the only thing that my body can handle. And I don't even get the obvious thing. Like some people, they'll have grains and they get a rash right away or they have diarrhea or there's something that kind of hits them like really fast. Um, but that doesn't happen for me. It, it's the, it kind of takes a little bit. And then once, you know, it's like silently, the inflammation is silently brewing in there. And all of a sudden by day five or whatever it is, it just like, oh, just hits like crazy. And then it does, and it doesn't go away right away. So even if at that point I said, oh, I'm not going to have grains for the rest of the time, it would take a week to get over that. That inflammation just does not go away really quickly. That's my personal story. And yeah, I'm not, not going back again. But anyhow, um, oh, I want to read you guys a testimonial. 
somebody in this book here. And I thought it sounded really good. Okay. Uh, sorry, let me just move my coffee cup and have a sip. Mm. Okay, so this is somebody, Dr. Perlmutter's book. In case you have this book, page 232. Okay, so before going off grains, this is what this person said. My health was in a downward spiral. Even though I was in my early 40s and worked out daily, I was lethargic and struggled to make it through the day. I was becoming more moody and would easily snap at the smallest things. Depression set in as I couldn't shake the negative thoughts. I was convinced that I was dying. Today, I'm a new person. I'm once again happy-go-lucky. I have energy throughout the day. I'm sleeping through the night regularly, and my joint pain is gone. I'm able to think clearly and not get sidetracked on my tasks. The best part is that the stubborn fat around my midsection virtually melted off. I thank you for helping me get my life back. So that's just one. I mean, he's got other ones in here, but I happened to see that one today, and I thought that one was a good one. And it's like... You really, like I said, you really don't know unless you try. And if you try it and really listen to your body, you can determine for yourself if this is something that you can afford to have in your diet. Maybe you can have it um, like an 80-20 rule throughout the week, maybe just on weekends, maybe special occasions, maybe a one and done, maybe never. I mean, it really, really depends. Even me being like as, as horrible as this is for me, I'm not going to lie and say I'm never going to have a grain. I'm never, I'm not going to say that. It's going to happen. I also know for me, and this is just experimental, is that certain ones are worse for me. If there is gluten attached to it, so like wheat, absolutely the number one worst one ever affects me the fastest and the worst. Whereas if I have rice, it will definitely catch up with me, but I won't notice it as much as the other ones. Again, none of these are great for keto. None of these are great for weight loss. So I guess I really am kind of talking when you're deciding to go off. Um, but you can decide for yourself how different ones feel or going off totally, how that feels for you. Um, so you guys tell me, how do you feel for those who haven't mentioned it? Have you ever gone completely off grains and how did you feel completely off grains? Um, do you notice anything when you're eating grains? Let me know what you guys think. Uh, Sean, Cole Robbie makes a good carb sub for potato things. Impastable miracle noodles, heart of palm, noodles for Italian, low carbs wraps for Mexican, uh, sandwich wraps, even though they aren't completely grain free, is better than breads. Yeah, it, it is better. Um, thyroid wise, though, I would argue that, you know, even a little bit is, is still going to be um, attacking there. The other thing, too, just on a thyroid note, and I can't remember um, all the ingredients, but soy. I did not realize how damaging soy is to the thyroid. I know this talk isn't about thyroid, but I'm just kind of talking to Sean here. Um, so really watch your, um, your kind of uh, wheat substitutes, check for soy. Um, those, are, those are two biggies for the thyroid. I actually didn't realize that and there was something that I was eating. And um, besides the fact that I felt like I was having a bit of a hot flash every time I ate it, it was like a sheer tacky noodle, but it was a specific one that was high in soy, like it was non-GMO soy. So I thought I was doing a good thing. And every time I would eat it, I feel very flushed and very warm. And uh, so then I was looking it up, thinking that there was a connection. Well, there is, it's estrogenic for one thing. So I guess that kind of raised my estrogen too high. But when I was reading that, it was saying um, that it is really damaging to the thyroid. So I'm like, ooh, two reasons, out. So now, soy is out there. Soy and grains are both in the same category for me. Diane, sugar and grains make me hurt so bad. Oh, it sure does. And here's the thing. Is it possible to have sugar without the grains? I guess if we were having pop or gluten-free ice cream, I'm trying to think of how many things there are that would be just sugar. And the reason why I'm, I'm asking this is because a lot of times people will say 
that, oh, I, you know, I feel so good when I'm off sugar. But then when you think about it, usually you're eating grains with the sugar. You know, if you're eating your baking and your bread and your desserts and um, that kind of a thing. So they usually kind of go together. Like when I hear people also say, oh, I can't believe how great my joints feel now that I've gone keto. And absolutely, the high fat makes a huge difference in how your joints feel and how you feel. But I would guess that like 90 to 95 percent of that good feeling is because when you go keto and you are tracking your macros, no way are you on any grains. There's no way you could afford those kind of carb macros if you were actually doing keto. So when people are kind of doing their clean, strict keto, oh my gosh, I feel so good. And they they give keto the credit, which is true because your blood sugar's down, your insulin is down too. But like I said, a huge part of this is the grain-free aspect. I feel like it is a really big part of why people feel so good. So yeah, so that's why this week I really wanted to do the challenge grain-free because um, like I said, I know people could argue and say, hey, I, I'm doing dirty keto, you know, it's 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 okay, sure. But like on my watch, we're, we're doing, I, I'm running a challenge and the challenge is a macro tracking challenge. So if you are in the challenge, you are tracking your macros. If you're tracking your macros, it's pretty hard to squeeze in the grains. Like I said, unless it's like a um, grain free tortilla, that'd probably be the only thing that you could squeeze in there. So don't do it for a week. Don't do it for one week, just so that you can see how amazing you can feel. And try not to think of it like, because I've done this, try not to think, you know what? I kind of kind of blew it at, at um, Thanksgiving. Uh, Christmas is just around the corner. I'll do it in January. Don't make that mistake. Because every gain that you make, even before Christmas, and even if at Christmas time you have a little bit of a backseat, that is nothing compared to what, how many weeks is it till Christmas? I can just say, I don't know, three weeks. I'm off the top of my head, three weeks. So what you do is when you say, oh, well, Christmas is coming, so I'm, I'm really not going to do it. Now it's in your mind. It's a free for all. And that's usually <laughs> most people are like, oh, you know what? If I'm off, I'm off. I'm really going to whatever. So what you could have maintained or lost a little bit before Christmas, maybe lost a lot. But if you put it in your mind that Christmas is coming, so why bother? The odds are good that you're going to gain significantly even before Christmas. Then you're going to pile on Christmas on top of that. So let's not have that mentality. Let's have a mentality of we want to be healthy. We want to feel great, if nothing else, to feel amazing on Christmas Day. And then if you want to treat yourself a little bit or whatever, go for it. But feeling really good leading up to Christmas. So let's let's kind of have that attitude. That's why I have this challenge this week. And I have a back-to-back -back one the week after. So we've got two full weeks of macro tracking challenges. And I think it's going to make a really big difference before Christmas. So hopefully you guys are all in. I'm certainly all in and thoroughly enjoying my time with you guys in there. Okay, so that's it for me today, you guys. Let's keep the conversation going this whole week. I want to talk about grain-free stuff. So I'm posting recipes and things like that. And just like kind of like maybe I'll find some links to some things that some um, uh, doctors have said about it. So you can hear, uh, yeah, I just wanna, anything I come up with, I'm just gonna post in the group because it's a really great topic. Oh, I see one more thing at the end here. That's really, Sean says, it's really great info. I'm menopausal and trying to figure out how to solve that with foods as well. Get rid of hot flashes and all that. I know grains make my joints ache. Sometimes I do it because I love the foods that I can make dirty. Uh, I can tell you that it, it's, it's funny how everything is all connected together. You know, we've got our estrogen and our progesterone. We've got our thyroid and stuff. And there just is no good reason for us to have grains and hormonally, it makes a lot of sense. Thyroid, it makes a lot of sense. Arthritis, it makes a lot of sense. Like all the different things and even things that you may not even think about. Maybe there's a little digestion thing. Maybe there's a little constipation, little frequent headaches, whatever. There could be something that you just didn't realize that it was because of that. And you really won't know unless you go 100%. So anyway, uh, I'm excited. I'm excited for you guys to try this. I hope if you haven't before, you will. And at least consider, at least consider it. And please, please, if you do not have this book, 
please get this book. He also talks about how amazing MCT oil is for the brain in preventing Alzheimer's and dementia, but that's a whole other topic. And we have talked about it before, but anyways, um, yeah. So Teresa, thanks Lita, I'll be revisiting the grain brain. Yeah, it's a reread. It's a, it's a usually once every couple of years for sure, I will reread this book because it's got so many and I'll go, oh, right, I forgot about that because he talks about so many different things. It's, it's awesome. Um, anyway, you guys have a really great night and I will be posting my macros in probably an hour. I really don't know what I'm having for dinner, but hopefully hubby's got something going up there. So we'll see. All right, you guys have a great night. Thanks a lot for coming out. Bye. Hey guys, before you go, hit the like and subscribe button if you haven't already and hit the bell notification so you can be notified every time we have a new video posted. Also down in the description, I will have links to everything that we talked about in our chat today, including information on how you can join my Intentionally Bear Keto Support Group. See you next time.